Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Veronica Vessels and I'm a registered dietitian. I'm glad to have you here with me today as I discuss the Global Leadership Initiative on Malnutrition Criteria and how it can be used in practice. If you have not yet watched my previous video, which is on the introduction of the GLIM criteria and the theory behind it, I recommend you do so before watching this video. I've put the video link, the article, as well as the protocol I designed in the description box below, so go check that out. So I'm going to start this with a referral because in reality that's how we see most of our patients. We don't always get the opportunity to screen them. So your doctor gives you a referral and it looks like this. Miss M, please give supplements. So sometimes we have amazing doctors that provide us with the diagnosis, the comorbidities, and then they even provide blood, um, blood results. But other times we don't actually know what the diagnosis is. So it's very important that we assess all our patients, we diagnose them according to the nutritional aspect, and that we provide the correct intervention. So today's video is going to focus on the malnutrition diagnosis. We're not going to touch on the intervention. So recall the GLIM diagnostic scheme from my previous video, where it shows the different levels in which we use to diagnose a patient for malnutrition. So we first do the risk screening, then we do the diagnostic assessment, then the diagnosis, and lastly, the severity grading. So starting with the risk screening, you see your patient and this is what you see. It's a 40 year old Caucasian female. She had severe peptic ulcer disease, which resulted in her getting a ruin Y procedure one month ago. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm making use of the must tool to screen her, but you can use any validated screening tool that your department, your hospital, or even you as an individual uses. So there's five different steps to the MUST tool. We're going to start with the first tier, and that is step one. So when she hopped on the scale, her weight was at 60 kilograms or 132 pounds. When we measured her height, it was 1.6 meters or 5 foot 3. So that gave us a BMI of 23.4 kilograms per meter squared. <coughs> Sorry. So... According to the BMI classification, that classifies her as normal. But remember, it's not always just the weight that we need to look on, look at. So that is why we're going to move on to step two. So step two addresses the weight loss score. <coughs> Sorry. So that to me is a lot more important than her actual weight. And I'm going to underline here that it's important that we look at unplanned weight loss so if she has been trying to lose weight it's not as important for us whereas if she has lost the weight unintentionally then yes we are concerned so she reports that her weight on the day of her ruin y bypass was 66 kgs or 145.5 pounds her current weight is 60 kgs or 132 pounds so that gives her a weight loss of nine percent in one month now, when probing further, she said she has lost five dress sizes in one year and she has continuously been losing weight for the past three years. So by making an educated guess, we can definitely say she she can she has lost more than 10 percent of her body weight in the past six months. So she can get a score of two for step two. Moving on to step three, this is the acute disease effect score. So yes, she may be acutely ill, but more importantly, she reports that she is avoiding food in order to avoid the dumping syndrome symptoms. Now, the dumping syndrome, the dumping syndrome itself also affects the absorption of food. So both of those give her a score of two for step three. Moving on to step four, this is where we add up the scores from step one, two, and three, which was zero to two, which gives us a total score of four. So when you move to step five, you can see that this means she is at high risk and she should be treated. So knowing that she is a high risk patient, we can move on to the diagnostic assessment. From the previous video, we mentioned that there's 
two diagnostic assessment criteria that need to be met, and that is the phenotypic criteria and the etiologic criteria. Now, in order for her to be diagnosed with malnutrition, she needs to meet at least one from each criteria group. When we look at the phenotypic criteria, we see there's three different criteria that fall under this, and that is the non-volutional or unintentional weight loss, the low BMI, as well as reduced muscle mass. Now we can definitely say she meets the first criteria as she has lost 9% of her body weight in one month. Um, her BMI was at a reading of 23.4. So if you look at that top row, it says it, she only meets the criteria if she is less than 20 when she's less than 70 years old. Remember, she's only 40 years old, so she does not meet this criteria. Reduced muscle mass. So her muscle mass was tested using the um, mid upper arm circumference as well as the tricep skin fold to go to sorry to get to the arm muscle area. So her arm muscle area came to um, 20 from for the 25th to the 50th percentile. Sorry, I'm tripping over my words here. So her arm muscle area was plotted at the 25th and the 50th percentile. So Knowing or looking at that, we can see that that is also normal to an extent. Remember, we don't have a previous arm muscle area to judge, um, to compare to. So we can't really say how much muscle she has lost, but she definitely has been losing muscle over um, the past month as she's lost 9% of her body weight. But this last criteria in the phenotypic criteria tells us does she have a protein or a muscle deficit, which she doesn't when we measure it. Moving on to the etiologic criteria. So yes, she does have reduced food intake because she's trying to avoid the dumping syndrome. She also has reduced food assimilation or absorption because of the dumping syndrome itself. So she meets that first criteria. Inflammation, on the other hand, she presented with no inflammation and all her inflammatory markers were normal. So now that we've looked at the diagnostic assessment, we can classify her as malnourished because she has met one criteria from the phenotypic criteria and she has met one from the etiologic criteria. So now moving on to the diagnosis. Remember, this is an etiology based diagnosis classification and it's endorsed by the GLIM and it's consistent with those previously suggested by the International Consensus Guideline Committee, the AND or ASPEN guidelines, as well as the ESPEN guidelines. So these are the different criteria that is endorsed by the GLIM or endorsed by GLIM. And recall she had minimal to no perceived inflammation and she's suffering from a chronic illness. So her diagnosis will be malnutrition related to chronic disease with minimal or no perceived inflammation. If you want to spice up your diagnosis, you can add your signs and symptoms with as evidenced by, so that your diagnosis will read malnutrition related to chronic disease with minimal or no perceived inflammation as evidenced by unintentional weight loss, as well as reduced intake and assimilation as a result of dumping syndrome. It's a mouthful, but you've got a full diagnosis. Lastly, we need to move on to the severity grading. And remember, we do that with the phenotypic criteria. They only need to meet one of the phenotypic criteria in order for us to grade the patient. So this is the table that we use. Um, remember, she doesn't have a low BMI, she doesn't have a deficit in her muscle, so we're not looking at that. But if you come into contact with a patient that falls into one, more than one criteria, if it's two of them or all three of them, what you would do is you would grade each criteria and then you would take the most severe one. So if their weight loss is stage one, their BMI is stage one, but their muscle mass is stage two, then your patient will be stage two. So because she has lost more than 10% in six months, she would be diagnosed as having stage two or severe malnutrition. The other two we don't take into consideration because she doesn't fall within those criteria. So that's the end of the video. 
And here's some references that I used in the video. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the support and I hope you guys learned something. Please don't forget to leave a comment and suggestions on videos you'd like to see in the future. Give this video a like to support my channel and don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss out. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.